Hey, I'm Butler, and welcome to Butler's Garage Looks Axe. Um, Buddy Lee is a good, good friend of mine on YouTube, and he has been hounding me to create videos of things I do with my vehicles for, for years and years. And uh, Finally, I'm getting around doing this. Um, just picked up a, a new used 04 uh, Z71 Suburban. It's pretty good. Uh, it's a good truck, great nick, um, tons of miles on it. Uh, I, don't, I don't care personally because um, I'm going to be popping a new engine in this thing eventually when, when that goes and plan on driving this thing till the freaking steering wheel falls off because honestly, it's a great truck. It's one of the best ones they ever built. Easy to work on. Oodles and oodles of parts uh, to replace on it. All that fun stuff. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so today what we're going to do is upgrade the factory radio. Um, it is a six disc Bose system, but what sucks about it is it's the CD's jammed in it and it's, it's kind of garbage. Uh, and let, let's be honest, uh, Bose is just not really uh, good for car audio anyway. Sometimes they make decent sound systems, but the one in this one is just garbage. Uh, I don't like it and I will be replacing it to its entirety. Uh, I'll be putting in three-way component systems in the front and back doors. What I'll do with the mid-range is I'll just replace this uh, right here. Um, it's not ideal audio file wise but honestly it's just filler and that would be the perfect replacement for the trash paper foam speakers that are in these cars currently. Anyway, so onto the radio. We've got a AVIC 7200 NEX system. This was part of a upgrade package that came with a camera. I'm trying to find where I put that camera. There it is. Tiny, tiny little camera. I, I thought it was going to be a little bigger than this, but that's okay. Um, it did not really bother me anyway. It's going to go... I'd like to put it right here. Right under here. Just mounting that plastic. If I have to remove the hitch... I will. I don't think I need to. Uh, I might have to do that. Anyway. So, there's that. So, the channel is called Butler's Garage's Axe, as you know, because I don't have a garage. So, I gotta do everything outside. I mean, I do have access to actual, like, garages with lifts, but they charge by the hour, and I'm not paying them, like, six, seven, eight dollars an hour just to pop in a stupid radio or most of the things I'll be doing in this vehicle for that matter I just don't care um, so we got our mount kit uh, this is provided by Crutchfield they provide a uh, pretty nice selection of stuff but you don't really worry about it um, I used to do car audio insulation back in the day uh, for a short amount of time but I've been doing this on and off for oh god Ooh. A little over 15 years. But anyway, um, I remember back then when you got a radio, first off, it wasn't a microwave like that. It was just some little junky CD player thing. And if you didn't have a voltmeter, you were kind of screwed because you had to bust open the factory harness, the wiring, cut that up and do it. You use one of these all day long. So uh, now it's just this plug and play crap. It's pretty, pretty fantastic. But this one, uh, Retains a lot of stuff for GMs. What you need is, I mean, if you, if you need like one star and stuff, I don't use that crap. Uh, it'll retain that. And for some reason, in GMs, infinite wisdom, they do stuff like. Do, 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 do. Where is the. I think it's this one here. Anyway, oh, here it is. Retains warning chimes. Uh, they, they route warning chimes through the stereo. And then something like this, you're going to lose that. If that's not the end of the world for you, who cares? I mean, it's not really for me either. I'm doing this because I want to retain that uh, Panasonic OEM DVD system. And actually, eventually, I'm going to replace that whole damn thing. It's old. It's outdated. It's... It, I don't know. I don't like it uh, in general. I'll get something better screen, Bluetooth, HDMI capabilities since this has got HDMI output as well. Um, we'll also go over uh, that, especially with the 
watching, I wouldn't say watching movies while driving, but um, it, it will lock out features like passengers being unable to, you know, update your navigation stuff and just certain things while you're driving. And that's infuriating. Um, I don't plan on watching movies and, and shit like that while driving. I think that's a dumb idea. Um, but that option will be there if my wife wants to do that while I'm driving, but I, I don't plan on doing that. I don't think we, we prefer music anyway. So we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you a hack on how to um, unlock that per se. But like I say, it's really for, what I'm using it for is just functionality. But you don't know, necessarily watching videos while driving. Um, but I'm going to cover that and show you what you need to do with wiring and stuff. Uh, you got to kind of trick it in a way. But you got to uh, route your parking brake wiring to the ground of the radio um, to go ahead and do that. And then at some point there is a um, kind of a hack. I wouldn't call it a hack, but just a hidden feature for testing purposes uh, where you press and hold like the corner of the screen right here. And uh, it'll, you know, take a, release that, that limit driving. Anyway, let's uh, go ahead and start cracking into this and uh, get her going. Okay, so uh, the very first thing I'm going to do, and this is, a, in my opinion, an essential and necessary mod, uh, is to remove the dumb stickers that prior owners put on people's cars. And doing this one hand is a little tricky and very freaking dangerous. Anyway, what I'm going to do is take it off. You just take a straight edge right here like that, like just saw. Slut life here. I call it slut life because uh, it is the stupidest sticker I've ever seen. And it's just about as dumb as those family stickers. It also looks like it says slut life, literally. So you're going to see it. Uh, my buddy Andy's the same way. See it. Slut life. Um, I'm kind of mad at myself for not thinking of something like this because uh, I could have made a fortune and I wouldn't have to be doing what I do now, which is not always fun, I assure you. And I can just keep sitting back enjoying my life with some stupid stickers. Uh, I'm frankly not sure why people are using their cars. I think it started in Florida. I could be wrong. So correct me if they'd like. Uh, and it's just it's one of those pandering things like stupid browning stickers and, and whatnot. So there's that. And then another sticker that I hate. Is this junk too? No one cares that you have an air filter. You paid way too much money for it, Pet Boys. Honestly, it's just it's pointless. Uh, I can't remember what was right here. Wife took it off, but when I saw the Salt Life sticker, I was like, "Are you, are you kidding me? You didn't take that off?" He's like, "I ah, like, it. like, uh, no, it's coming off." So, all right, there's enough of that. Okay, one thing that um. What you really need is a bucket of random shit. This is great. Uh, I call it a bucket of tricks. It's kind of empty right now, but usually it's got all these like knickknack things you acquire over the years from stuff that you didn't really end up using. It's like I totally forgot I had uh, fresh razors at the bottom. That's safe. And I don't know why I have solder at the bottom of this. Barely solder things. And uh, a, a fuse mount. I don't know what it's rated for. I don't know. Do, 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 do. Some cable, more random stuff. Wire, wire pins, random wire, and a couple of pry tools, and honestly, I don't know where the other one is. These are freaking fantastic to have um, for panel pulling, dash pulling, I mean, just plastic panel -y stuff in general all over your car, uh, especially when a car like this is getting this age. Plastic gets pretty damn brittle uh, after a while, and uh, it will crack, it will tear. Um, sometimes even shatter when you're yanking on this stuff because sometimes when you pull this stuff off you got you know you need to really show it who's boss so these are really uh, good at preventing you from tearing up your um, I gotta find the other ones so I start working on that dash okay first things first um, I don't care who you are how great you are how bad you are with uh, cars but when you're messing with electrical systems I really don't just disconnect the battery don't uh, work on it while doing things with the battery uh, connected because you could really seriously short something out. And 
I don't even do that and I'm pretty lazy at times and I will take shortcuts if I can, but usually I like it done right. So one of those things is disconnecting your battery. So what we're gonna do is pull the hood release here. Do, do, do. And open her up. The battery. I got this thing. That is a tiny bolt. Okay. About any wind going on here has just picked up. Uh, anyway, so on the battery, um, there's your, ne your negative and of course your positive, which is red. What you want to do is remove the, the positive, not the negative. Um, that way, if any remaining electricity is in the system somewhere, it'll uh, be able to ground out and whatnot. Removing the positive also you know, removes the hot lead to the electrical system um, and make sure it's not going to be touching once you remove it, because it's going to probably have some memory to it and want to, you know, go back to the hole it was bolted to. Um, so make sure you're not, it's not touching, because it could, you know, short itself out by touching vaguely or a little bit and mess things up. Um, also, be safe touching that. It's okay to touch it. Um, you won't get shocked, but if you do touch the metal while you're doing that, you will ground yourself. You will shock yourself. Um, you're not going to die or anything, but it's, it's going to, you know, definitely wake you up. By the way, uh, to get the battery terminals off, you will need, you can't really see it, but it's a, it's an eight mil. Um, you can do five sixteenths and get away with it because it's not it's something that's really heavily torqued down. But uh, eight millimeters is the correct nut, or nut, the correct socket to uh, pull the uh, battery terminals off. Okay, so we're gonna start with the uh, outer bezel panel. Um, one neat thing I'm gonna do in this install, I'm not sure if I'm gonna step it up, separate it into different movie, video, whatever, uh, is a tailgate mode button. Um, think about putting it right here. So basically it's going to be the remote wire is going to be also tapped through the button to the power, which is basically ignition to power. So that way when you just push the button, the radio will come on without the keys and the ignition in that way because uh, I like to tailgate with buddies and family a lot out in the woods and you know we go shooting and stuff, play visions and whatnot. And uh, having that feature would be great. So anyway, with the panel here, you're gonna want to work your way around. It's a little tricky. Um, yes, you can use a screwdriver if you want. But once again, using these panels will save your plastic, especially for old grill. And this one's got Tons of freaking connectors and cords. I'm not going to the panel clips. And uh, you don't want to be pulling on it too hard because it's a long piece. It's a very hard, brittle plastic. And uh, it'll definitely F up if you don't treat it right. I'm hoping to do that so I can lower the shift lever. There, let's so put on the parking brake. Huh. Brakes not very good. Not strong. Okay. That was catching. I didn't realize it went back that far. So. All right. Next, we need a. Uh, sockets to pull out this old radio. Probably have to move this damn shifter again. Okay, what we're going to do is uh, take this 
seven millimeter socket and we'll pull the radio out. Like I said, I probably have to move that stupid shifted column in here. That's the way that is. By the way, like I said, one of the big reasons why I'm not removing this is because the CD player in here is also a chip, and these suffer at a high rate of failure with um, jamming mechanisms. So this one is no exception. It has CDs jammed in it somehow. It just does it itself. It's not like bringing them into there and messing them up. They just think angrily on the motion. Enough apparently where there's people out there on the internet will uh, repair that problem for you. Uh, they know exactly what it is. I think it has to do with uh, some, like plastic spline drive or some worm drive or something like that. It's uh, wearing out. It needs to be greased or something. Now, I'm beginning to think. Okay, never mind. I thought these were going to be stuck in there. Wife's looking forward to the uh, Bluetooth thing that she's missing from her old car. And of course, we'll have a backup camera, which will be a first for her. Um, I had a 2013 SI before I decided to let a little spawn. Um, and it had a backup camera. It is fantastic. It's just great all around. And with this aftermarket Pioneer, It'll be nice uh, because we'll be able to actually use it while driving. So, I'm um, playing with the idea of getting a like, uh, night vision camera and mounting it in the front somewhere, um, inconspicuously, of course, because I'm all about uh, function and form. So, everything will be up there. So, the part at least. Wiring harness catching all the idles now, so I'm not gonna keep yanking on it. Uh, that's how you break shit permanently. Okay, so now I got the radio out. Um, I was right; it was held in there uh, by snagging cable. It's this old sticky shit the back reuse, and it just kind of getting hooked up on the back here. So next step I'm gonna do is I gotta take a uh, what's called a close quarter saw, and I need to cut the bracket of the dash back here. It is not really integral to the truck itself. Um, it'll be fine. That is just standard operation. You gotta you gotta cut it to make room. Um, so there's that, and uh, I'll be back. Now, I've seen how you trolls can be on uh, YouTube and stuff, but before you go crazy on me, I'm not soldering this shit. Uh, these butt connectors are perfectly fine. I've been using them for 15 years. They will work. I mean, after all, this is going in a damn suburban uh, that stays on the road. Uh, it's not going swimming uh, or anything like that. Um, and they, these work fine. And honestly, putting heat shrink on these kind of things is, is a little overkill. But like I said, it's just good business. This is the way I've been doing it. This is the way it works. So right now I am wiring the radio harness to the pack harness. Um, we do get a sort of a diagram saying you know what color wires what it's generally the same across the whole board of 
aftermarket radios and stuff, these, these colors coincide with each other. Uh, the pack gives you a little schematic. Um, this took a little bit for me to figure out. It's, I'm not quite sure exactly what it is, but it kind of threw me off at first. I think it's just to uh, accommodate some of the effed up GM wiring. But basically this will go to the, um, the accessory, because I can see my powers right there and uh, ground. <clears throat> so I'm going to hack this unit like I've talked about. What I've done was I've taken the parking brake signal here for the radio and connect it to the, the ground signal. And I'm going to do that to the ground signal of this pack um, unit too. You will intend to uh, activate a hidden mode to uh, allow operation of the mostly navigation stuff while the uh, vehicle's in, in motion. Uh, if you don't do that, it won't really properly work. So what I'm doing here with wiring is I'm taking these butt connectors and I'm putting them on the ends of these wires here. And then I've taken some heat shrink, which you can pick up at, you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, or whatever. Um, and it looks like this. And you can cut them in half, and they're just a little over the length of your typical butt connector, connector as you can see right here. So I'll cut it in half, and I'll wrap it over. And then all you got to do is just take a lighter to it and shrink it all up, and it'll, it'll shrink down. Um, it, this is not really necessary, not really uh, too critical or important, but it, uh, it's just good, good measure, good business. Oh, and uh, if you're wondering, what am I going to do with the grounding the, uh, the camera? Because there is a ground wire. Let's see here. This connects to the other end of the camera, which is right here. Uh, sorry, it's a little sun to mine, so it's hard to see. Anyway, the connector's on that, and your ground wire is right here. So what I've gone ahead and done is just bundled this up. Um, the ground wire is significantly shorter than the power wire and the uh, video RCA in. So I think what it's basically going to have me do is I'm just going to ground uh, focus. I'm just going to ground this guy right here uh, somewhere around the truck. So probably under the chassis. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through the dash and out and then under the truck and just use a shit ton of, uh, of loom here so it keeps it out of the way. That way I don't have to pull tons of panels and I can just use loom and uh, zip ties, the kind with the... Uh, here we go. These kind of zip ties uh, where I can just pop them into the sheet metal. I'll just probably use like self-tapping screws uh, just to make it quick and easy because really it's, it's just camera wire. So I'm going to protect it run it and okay so the harness is mostly wired uh, with the exception of ignition or whatever you want to call it accessory so what I'm going to do is this will go to the pack unit and this goes to the head unit so this is going to tell the radio from the car uh, turn on Pack in it will handle all that with its weirdness and whatever the hell exactly that is. Um, <clears throat> what I'm also going to do is take this guy and wire that up. So I'm not going to necessarily install the, it right now, but this is for the backup camera. Um, it doesn't use a lot of power, so tapping off the accessory is fine. Uh, you don't want to tap it off the, uh, the, con the constant because that's, that's just burning the battery down. Um, but yeah, so once that's tapped in, um, it'll work. The camera will turn on by this guy right here, your purple and white wire. Um, that connects to your your, uh, your pack as well. Um, it will know when it connects to the truck and it translates it for the radio to tell it to you know, go in reverse and whatnot. Um, what the hell is this for? I'm not sure off the top of my head right now. I have to look it up. I think it's for I think it's for the SWIC. I don't know. We'll find out. SWIC is basically for the uh, your uh, steering wheel controls. If you want to retain those, if you don't want to be ghetto and shit. So I've lined up uh, my heat shrink tube right here over one of the uh, crimp butt caps. Um, double check it's centered enough.
I don't want it too far off on one side because it's just, I don't know, a person that bothers me. And you just take your uh, kitchen lighter here, grill lighter, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Start from one side, no really crazy trick to it. And then you kind of slowly work your way back up to let gases get pushed out and just quick like that, and then you're done. Um, you don't want to uh, cook it too long because it will catch fire. It starts to melt and gets a little gross. Um, it doesn't perfectly seal on each end. What it does do, at least, is it gives it a little fighting chance. Uh, it helps from snagging and rubbing, chafing, the like, uh, and just gives it better look and overall protection. So I'm going to finish the, this one and this one up, and then I'll wrap this up in electrical tape all nice like so I can pop it in the dash. Okay, so the wiring harnesses are done. I'm just going to wrap them up nice and tight with uh, some uh, electrical tape. Not too tight because you never know if you might pull something even though, you know, oh, I forgot to heat shrink these. Actually, I'll take a quick clip for you guys and show you how that's done if you've never seen it. It's nothing to it. You just throw a heat source under it and it shrinks. Um, lighters are fine. They make specialized tools for it, but honestly, lighters are fine. Um, so yeah, that's done for the camera. Uh, if you spot it, this guy right here, I suck at falling off. Huh? This guy right here is uh, not used. So I'm just probably gonna clip that a little bit to keep it from not being so exposed and I might throw a little heat shrink on it if I got any left just to keep it from touching anything. And uh, that is about it. And then I'll wrap her up and I'll stuff stuff this wiring bundle for the camera and do uh, somewhere in the cab and dash and I'll do it another day. This will connect to the factory wiring and this will connect to the pack. Um, this will go out of the pack to the radio and then that, and that, and that, and that that's done. Um, and here's your pack unit. So what you gotta do is, um, you can actually program the SWIC. Uh, from what I'm gathering, it uh, you don't have to do that for a lot of stuff. Like I know this Suburban here, what I had to do was simply, oh shit. Do, 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 where is it? Here it is. So this numbers you see here, um, there's a chart over on here. Right here, it tells you, um, what rate to select so any of these brands you select the certain number and uh like i said we've got a pioneer here and we went to number seven okay so seven that's good um this fell out of the box i haven't seen it before i didn't realize the fuck it was it's a it's a door chime and i thought that this was going to um route through the radio from the factory but honestly i don't give a shit if it does or not uh door chime's a door chime so it'll work fine I uh, think right here, that's like a volume knob. And did it do volume output? Yeah, so there's that. Now, this is a uh, OnStar volume adjustment, which is right here. Um, there it is. I'm not gonna fuck with that because I don't give a shit about OnStar, and I think it's an uh, invasion of human privacy anyway. So, there's okay, that. so I've attempted to cut this bracket up uh, with a core hacksaw and uh, that failed miserably um, it, it doesn't work well then I tried to use a Dremel and uh, that didn't work well either in fact it killed my fucking Dremel so well the Dremel rotary tool for that matter so what you really need short of a hacksaw it's called a fine tool made by the original maker of or manufacturer called fine um, you're gonna want carbide blades uh, in this case this is a Dremel brand quote unquote fine tool and these bad boys will cut through wood, metal, uh, of the like or anything like that like butter. It just vibrates very high pitch frequency or quickly or however the fuck you want to describe it and uh, it, it goes just about anything so uh, I'm going to pop that up and take care of that metal bracket so we can fit this right in there. Seriously, why is this a thing? Um, so I've taken out some pieces of plastic right here, and what I'm going to do is try to hit this right here, because hitting it at an angle back there is uh, not really easy, especially trying to get a fine tool in. Um, I got the top all right, and it should be enough. If not, I can always hit it again with the fine tool. It goes right damn through it. So 
Uh, I guess you gotta be careful with wiring harness stuff back okay. here. Well, with that fine tool, that's all that motherfucker wrote. Uh, it went through the bottom of that bracket like butter. Now keep in mind, you gotta be really careful because you can see there's wiring right behind it. So when you're using a fine tool, uh, be really careful with it. Take your time, it's gonna be really loud. Um, it's not really that painfully loud, but extended periods of time with that kind of noise, you're gonna wanna wear ear protection. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get away just leaving that thing up there. It's attached uh, on this plastic rail right here and to the top of the dash, and I don't want to tear it up if I don't have to. Um, you know, less is more in this situation. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, rig up the radio. It's plastic pieces, we're gonna pop them in here when it's mounts, and uh, reinstall the HVAC controls and fire it up, see if it works before buttoning it up because that's when things go wrong is when you button all back up without testing it then you get fucked on that okay so got everything plugged in i uh, got the pack hooked up so let's see here so we got our swig which is steering wheel controlled uh do, 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 do. um radio connection sorry i'm trying to read through the screen it's kind of dumb uh non-amplified factory auto and amplified factory auto okay so if you've got the factory bose system that comes in these things you're gonna want to hook this up to the amplified factory audio uh, because there is an amplifier down in there along with the little piece of shit subwoofer it comes with and uh, you it that way it just knows how to play nicely with uh, external amplifier uh, especially a, a uh, OEM external amplifier which are famous to be a giant pain in the ass and someone's riding on this stupid mini bike on a 55 mile an hour road anyway I'm at my uh, parent-in-law's house, had to travel down and couldn't do the radio install completely uh, at the at the house. So here we are doing um, a garageless act and father-in-law is one of his uh, carport things. So uh, normally I'd be in the baking sun. All right, so let's see here. What else? All right, programming button. Um, this, just so you know, Tahoe Suburban of the 2004 nature. I would go ahead and say safely the 2004 to 2006 type um, Tahoe Suburban will uh, just plug and play. There's no pre-programming. So you just pop it all in and uh, fire it up and your steering wheel controls will work. What I noticed was uh, this activates the piece shit on Star System and it actually will cut the radio off completely and OnStar takes over the factory amp and comes across your speakers. And then you gotta tell it, never mind, or where the hell you wanna tell it. And then eventually your radio will come back on. Um, it's kind of annoying. So it's hot as hell right now. Um, wife and I are gonna go to uh, down the road to their aunts and go jump in the pool. So what I'm gonna do is just button this up. Um, not completely, but just go ahead and pop the radio in uh, and into its housing. Um, and, you know, just wire it up. It's already wired. It's just, just it's always running. I haven't run the uh, Bluetooth micro, not Bluetooth, the damn microphone, phone hands-free microphone yet. It's basically just going to go around back here, uh, up through the pillar, the A pillar here. Uh, let me hold this better. Um, through the headliner and up in here. It looks like someone's been in here before. Um, that does not appear factory. It doesn't move like factory. I don't know, when I pull this console now, I'll figure more of it out. I also noticed there's something that was done right here. Uh, that speaker wire, it looks like a remote wire going down here. I wonder if like, previous owner maybe swapped out the woofer in there or something there. I don't know. What I do know is uh, this is playing along like it would with a normal factory amp. So I'm, I'm betting that nothing really is done. It just had something else going on. Uh, I'll get to the bottom of it and I'll figure it out. Um, anyway, so without further ado, let's turn this around a little bit. I don't want to scratch my dash up. They say, well, fuck your dash up. What is holding it on? Hang on. Oh, RCAs. Okay. Alright. Be really careful with it. Um, this is uh, your door chime. So I, I was under the impression that. Uh, this is gonna route like a factory door chime. I'm guessing the door chime itself is built into the factory radio, so they had to give the little little thing. Uh, it lets you adjust the volume right here. I'm gonna set it on max because I'm gonna stick it way back in there because I don't feel like mounting up under the belly in this shit. 
has a nice screw. Um, I think, you know what I'm gonna do? Uh, see the HVAC? Sorry, I hit the damn button. All right, so HVAC back there. I'm just gonna get some uh, Velcro sticky and just run on top. Yeah. All right, for, without further ado, again. So stick it in. That's that guy. Free screen. teeth ready to go um yeah it's not going for the phone or recording anyway i'll get back one more thing just a heads up so something really weird happened with this when i first hooked it up um the swick programming led light was on so i didn't even have the key and the ignition but that was on and it had the uh, the radio powered as well as soon as I connected that battery. Furthermore, um, it wouldn't let me start the truck. The, the truck would want to start, but it's almost like it's fuel injectors weren't even running. Uh, like almost if you pull the you know fuel pump fuse. So I disconnected the uh, vehicle plug right there, the vehicle connection, and then replugged it back in and. Uh, Everything worked like it was supposed to. All right, this is turning into the never any install. Uh, FYI, don't attempt something like this when you're abroad at out of you know out of state and with kids and things like that. Um, this is like day three. It's all in there. It's it's uh, it's working. Um, I just need to wire the uh, camera, the satellite antenna for the nav, and the Bluetooth microphone. Um, which is going to all be routed up here. I'm also going to route the uh, audio video output of this unit to uh, the inputs right here on the back of this uh, factory DVD. I'm just going to run it here through the roof real quick and uh, it's going to come out and just, just gonna be kind of plugged in there. Uh, that's just really my only solution to this at the moment. When I get another better aftermarket monitor, it'll be all tucked away and, and nice. All right, so to get this uh, A pillar down, what you need to do is just get your um, little tool, hook it on the end right here. And you want to grab it right about there because that's where one of the clips are. <sighs> it looks like it's, and this this happens. So I'm gonna remove this and reattach it back to the plastic piece when I go to reinstall it. That way it uh, it snaps in better. And we got one down here as well. And just give it a little yank. Let's just call it. All right, let me uh, use two hands to get this. All right, so it was just uh, this. This was catching right here. So it. So once you get that pulled, it just comes out. Um, and then here's your uh, clip right here to the tweeter. And... <clears throat> this might be another two-hand deal. Yeah, sorry, got leak it. So what I'm going to do here is just use my uh, cheap Amazon scribe with the broken piece on it. I mean, I got this hook, but I've never really found any useful application for it. So you can get these on like on Amazon for next to nothing in like a three-piece set. And they're, they're pretty decent, So, but they're also cheap. That way, if uh, you do break them, you don't cry. All right, now that the uh, A-pillar is moved, we need to take off the visor. And we're going to also take off this guy. Um, this console up here that way I can get the microphone in there I'm gonna remove what looks like someone else's microphone before and put in a new one I was thinking about using this factory location right above the it's kind of slightly behind the head but I you know what I think if we put a microphone there behind this as great as that would be I don't think it'd properly pick up a phone conversation but I, you know I could be wrong I don't know. Also, I would have to go digging further back in this uh, headliner here. So it's just much easier just to wire this shit all the way up to this console. Oh, and uh, real quick, you're going to need a star bit to get this stuff out. Um, they don't take Phillips head drivers. Um, in GM's infinite wisdom, they went with star. Or, yeah, they're star driver, bit driver. So uh, this one, I don't know exactly what size it is. I don't know if you can see it. 115. I don't even know if that's an actual size. I don't see anything else on this. It's just some uh, shitty Craftsman bit 
but it'll do the job. Okay, so just removing the screws out of here. Uh, keep in mind this piece right here um, has a plastic little cap um, that goes up in there and has a, another hex screw the same size as the other ones. Uh, keep in mind that it's this one and it's smaller than the others, so make a note of that. Right now, I'm running into a big problem. The last person that was in here totally stripped the shit out of this screw out and I'm not sure how I'm going to go about getting rid of it. Maybe, I mean, worst case scenario, just uh, drill the shit out of it. I really don't want to do that, but uh, that's the only way I can really figure out how to extract it. It's chewed up pretty good in there. Maybe get a bigger one, make a bigger, like, star. We'll figure it out. Just a heads up, you're gonna need like a little teeny tiny screwdriver to uh, get this out. Um, this is a pain in the butt, but it clips uh, right in there and you need, like I said, a teeny tiny screwdriver to just pry that, this lip up just enough to get it out. Um, and it's not really fun because this is not exactly light. Okay, so I've got a uh, super duper cheap Husky set here of uh, jewelers and micros drivers and bits and whatnot and I've got a bunch of different size hexes uh, or star bits so what I'm gonna start doing is playing with each one of them and uh, see what will work alrighty so thanks to the multiple sizes I've got I was able to find one that just plays nice enough with this and I've used my extension so I can actually see what's going on up there I know camera angles not being too nice spot right now what I'm gonna do is since there's three uh, screw mounts on this thing. I'm gonna borrow one from the other side and then I'm gonna acquire a brand new screw and replace that later. Oh, let me uh, put this down. But, uh, cause I don't wanna put this, this strip screw back in. Once again, big shout out to my super cheap piece of shit uh, jeweler set by Husky. I think this thing is like mm, four, back in, so. yeah, about four years ago, I bought it for about 14 bucks. And I'll tell you what, it's paid for itself over and over and over and over. Um, the only thing that wears after a while is this. I need to get some epoxy really because it pops right off. It should stay stuck on there. But like I said, handy as hell. Um, it's super cheap. You can get it like Home Depot. I think that's the uh, their uh, in-house brands, Husky. I'm sure they got something similar to Lowe's and for Cobalt or whatever. But I tell you what, for the money, don't leave home without these things. They're perfect. Oh, and a quick update. I've discovered that this center console takes a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, great job, GM. Okay, so just uh, pull that that one single Phillips head screw out um, from right here. And what will happen is these two are clipped up in here. Um, I'm just going to let it hang. Uh, I know it's kind of sort of bad juju, but it's uh, supported by all that and it weighs nothing. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Now, I'm going to crack out of this guy up here and uh see how the hell it's connected i believe just the drop down screen there's probably phillips screws and whatnot okay so it shows you my inexperience this trim level suburban uh yukon tahoe this is uh it's actually it seems to be a factory microphone that clips in right here so what i've done is i'm gonna rob that location and i've taken the factory microphone and clipped it in there i believe it's probably for onstar or something so i'm just gonna leave it alone i'm not gonna cut it up or nothing um there's no point when I can just tuck it away. All right, so um, this does take 10 millimeter socket screws. What you're gonna do is remove these first and then you can loosen these up. And what you'll do is try to get a good grip on it and uh, give, it a, give it a little bit of man strength. So what's gonna happen is it's, it's actually hooked on this. So it's gonna come down and, and uh, hit the bracket mount here for you. Um, that way it, uh, and it doesn't completely fall out. So that's all I really need. I just need this much space so I can run these uh, cables into there. Um, I've got 12 feet AV composite, so let's get to it. But Sorry, it's a little bit of congestion. All right, boys and girls. <clears throat> this DVD player is held on by bolts. Um, they look like, wouldn't call it 10. Well, it actually might be 10. I mean, most long I mean, jap traps use 10, but we'll, we'll see in a second. Um, I'm going to try to take the ones uh, out of here first and just so I can pull this down, hopefully, because I'm just going to route the uh, audio video patch cables up here and then there and then back through here to plug into this input right here. 
Uh, that's the only way to get video to this unit because it's got a standalone DVD player. So it's not doing anything other than sending sound back to the head unit, uh, which with that pack adapter you saw me install, that will, that will do it. And it's already rigged to go. I haven't really figured it out yet because right now it's just in the get it working to play Bluetooth audio mode. Um, and today is the uh, buttoning up thing. I still won't do the backup camera for a little bit though because that that's a middle barrier need to cross. I just don't feel like getting another truck and uh, kind of don't have the time for it. Um, and it's just too fucking hot. I mean, no kidding. Right now it's like 101 degrees outside and I'm lucky enough to have this carport. But that's uh, South Carolina for you. Anyway, let me get this. Oh, real quick. <clears throat> this uh, panel right here, if you're looking to remove this, uh, is a little tricky. So, this is what it looks like. It hangs right here and then swings up and clicks into uh, right there. So, what I had to do was take my scribe, my little Amazon special scribe, and wedge it up in there just enough without chewing up the plastic and then twisting it counterclockwise like that just to be able to grab it and pull it down slightly enough to let my Amazon special panel pullers get in there and just pop it right out so and that's that's how it worked okay so uh, got it back in I'm gonna warn you that metal tab that was up in there that I showed you a second ago that like goes into the roof line like so so when you when you pull it down it kind of bends back so what you're gonna do is once you pull it down, it's a safety, so you're not gonna be able to rip out the whole thing. It's not gonna come crashing down on you, but it's gonna catch. And when you do, you gotta bend that metal tab out. And uh, like, I mean, you gotta use your man hands and push that metal tab and then it'll come down. Then from there, you wanna bend that metal tab back again to get as much of an angle as you can and then stick it back in and then try to hang your fingers on that metal tab and guide it because it's gonna go back in that way and you have to, push uh, with all your big boy strength uh, to get it back up in there. I'm um, about to button these down and uh, tighten these back up. I, I, you know, I was going to um, pull this whole thing down. That would just make it easier to work because let me tell you, that was a son of a bitch. Uh, I even I got a little boo-boo on that one. Um, but I think this is another metal tab right here and I think I can remove this and find something else. I don't know. The point was get this wired and it I did and it works looks fine it's not not look amazing but really no one's gonna really notice to be honest with you um, so now we have the capability to project from that to that alrighty on to the microphone in there and we're gonna add the GPS I'm gonna try to put the GPS right up under that vent if I can because behind there uh, it shines straight down to the dash, so that's not really any obstruction. Um, now I put these uh, I put these satellite receivers under directly below the dash before in the plastic, and they've never had an issue finding um, position. Even though the manuals are like, you know, they pretty much tell you to put it on top of the dash, and like literally if you can on the roof, and it looks ugly as shit. But anyway, uh, like I said, never had any issues putting it under the plastic, and. Uh, definitely won't with this one considering this is vented. Oh, by the way, just before it uh, even happens, I already know someone's going to come in and say something. Uh, but brother, you pay the wires. This deck going to tit the wires up. Well, look, first off, this is not HDMI cable. This is not high, high uh, intensity data cable. This is not fiber optics. This is fucking composite AV cable. That's also, by the way, stupid, stupid thick. Uh, I don't think this plastic and cloth's going to mess anything up. Yeah, I'm definitely not the first one in here. Uh, I don't, I don't know where the hell that goes to. I mean, that's definitely a remote wire, and this is either a really sad power wire, or no no wire, or it's literally speaker piece that speaker cable going into there. I think um, I might take a look at it, but I honestly don't know where uh, it goes back here. Mm. Huh. I just kind of don't care to find out right now. I mean, I don't hear anything that suggests there's anything aftermarket in here uh, other than my new radio. But uh, we'll find out. I'll keep you posted. Okay, so I've got the uh, EV cable ran and run through here. Um, 
I'll do a final QA check once I uh, wrap the, the microphone and so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I just kind of put one zip tie here to run it down. Now, what I could do is I could have uh, run it through the, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if we can go inside here. could have run it through this hole that, uh, that was opened up by removing the, the sail panel. Uh, but what I'm going to do instead is I've taken my pry bar tool and I've taken this piece of foam here that was tucked in and rolled it out. And so I'm just going to run this down through and then that way it can run into the, the belly of the dash uh, much easier because it will go along with this current wiring already instead of having it sticking way out in there and um, potentially being a pain in the ass to install later on when I go to connect that tweeter again. And that's it. Uh, really, there's nothing to it. Um, thank you for watching my first video on Butler's Garageless Axe. I know it, you know, filmography is not really amazing right now, or, or photography for that matter. I'm using a Next 5 uh, Alpha by Sony, and I'm using my iPhone 7. Um, still figuring out some, stu some stuff. I got a microphone order uh, for the Next 5, because currently, with the factory microphone on that thing, you could hear the fart off of the gnat which kind of trashed a good bit of the first footage of this video. Um, the next project is going to be a, a, a subwoofer install for the S60. It will be a JL Audio Lunchbox Special. Um, and that means it's just like a very compact subwoofer with amplifier. Uh, they sold you like a, like a nice prefab box with the, a W3 sub in it. And it came with a nice form-fitting... Uh, amplifier with like a foam and casing on the back of it and so we're going to whip that up. I'm going to show you how to do that um, without really going too deep into it or tearing up the, the factory wiring because frankly that that sound system is actually pretty good. Uh, it's just really woofy as far as uh, bass is concerned. It's, uh, the, the Volvo asks a lot of those woofers in the doors so we're going to try to cut that back and put a little sub bass in there uh, I don't think I'm going to need a, a like a base cleanup system or unit of that matter. Um, I don't think it uh, it really needs it. I might be able to get away with it. Um, we'll, we'll see. So stay tuned for that. And uh, once again, thanks for watching.